three-time Stanley Cup champion, gold medalist with Team Canada, number 10, Patrick Sharp, and number 20, Brandon Saad. Hang on a sec, I gotta make sure this thing's working based that on works. how this is yes. started off. <laughs> Look, everybody in this room knows what Brandon has done, so they really did not need the video confirmation. Hey, what is it like for you guys to walk into a room and see this many people? This is nuts. Yeah, this is, uh, this is what it's all about. So, uh, one of the things I'm sure Sharpie could say the same thing is uh, missing these fans and being back here uh, makes it all real again. So, this has been a fun weekend so far. Patrick, I'm sure you thought you were going to come back here as a member of the alumni. Did you, uh, did you ever think you'd be coming back for one more tour? I always hope so. Um, you know, it's, uh, it was tough to leave. I don't think I ever fully got over uh, being traded and playing for a new team. Dallas Stars was awesome to me. They were great. Met a lot of good friends there. but. You know, Sauter just touched on it. It's like, um, it's not quite the same. When you come back and you see people like yourselves cheering for us and walking around Chicago the last couple of days, it, it reminds you uh, how awesome it is to be a Blackhawk, and I couldn't be happier. Patrick, you told me this story when you and Johnny first got to Dallas. There's a lot of things that the Blackhawks do that other teams don't do. And one little example is the nutritional side of the game. And you said, you know, Johnny and I would be drinking this green drink after every game, and kind of the guys in the room are looking like, what are these two guys doing over there? But by mid-season, the whole room was drinking the same stuff, right? Yeah, I don't want to beat up on the Dallas Stars. That's no, the last no, no. thing I'm doing. They were, uh... They were good. I'll let you guys beat up on the Dallas Stars, but um, I really enjoyed my two years there. Uh, it certainly was a little bit different, you know, being around the culture of the Blackhawks locker room, at least the last, uh, when I was here in 2015, it was something special. I mean, we won three Stanley Cups in six years. That's a special group, and that doesn't happen often. So uh, Johnny O'Dewey and I took that as much as we could down to Dallas and tried to help those guys. Uh, they're a great team. We tried to help as much as we could, but... Uh, Definitely happy to have the red jersey on now. We are too. Brandon, what part of your game has uh, elevated since you left here a couple years ago? Well, I think over the past two years, you know, you face a lot of different things and challenges throughout your career. And um, just going through that adversity and overcoming some of it and uh, having two years to develop and train and get bigger and stronger and uh, all that leads into being a better player but uh, I think the biggest thing is experience the more you play the long seasons you get to learn how your body works and um, how to go throughout the season so I just think the experience of gr growing older and, and getting more experience in the league Patrick his wallet too his wallet yeah, got a little true. bit bigger that's true <laughs> bank account has elevated no question but it's time to return the favor because you came back at a discount here. So maybe on some of these trips, Sodder picks up the tab a couple times, right? Hey, you said, you said it, not me. So. <laughs> you know, there's really, when you look at what the core of this team has accomplished over the last decade, they've been to the top of the mountain three times, knocking on it several other. You'd say that they really don't have anything more to prove, but Patrick, when you were with the guys, say even last night, do you get a sense that that stuff's in the rear view mirror and you guys want to you know, show the hockey world that you guys belong in the conversation once again? Absolutely, I think um, me as an individual um, can draw some of the same similarities to the Hawks last year. I, I wasn't here, but I, I definitely watched all the games and first place team and, and uh, 
didn't get out of the first round. I know that everybody wants to come back next year uh, and exceed those expectations and, and get back to winning playoff rounds. I can take that a step further to me. I had a tough season last year, a couple injuries, uh, a bad year uh, as a team, as an individual. I'm looking to get back to the level that I think I can play at. So um, you've mentioned the core group that's accomplished so much in the, in the past few years. That's, that's awesome, and that's something that we'll look back on years from now and be really proud of. But, but we're, not, we're not done, I don't think. I mean, we're not just out there playing games to, to fill the seats and then play hockey. We, we think we can win again. You know, Brandon, when you came here to Chicago, you're the young guy, you're able to look at guys like Patrick and Marion and, and others in the room and, and try to, you know, model your game after certain guys. Now you come back, again, you're only 24, but on this team, there's a lot of guys that are young. Do you look at yourself this time around as a, a little bit of a leader and, and having to kind of meld you know, some of the young guys with some of the established veterans? Yeah, yeah, I think uh, coming back, I'm more comfortable coming in. I was a rookie, first time coming. I um, mean, these guys are still the leaders. They're, they're where they're at for a reason. I still look up to them, and I'm sure the young guys are the same way. But uh, for me, it's just being myself, leading by example, uh, trying to do what I can do to help the team win. And, um, fit in the group as quickly as possible. So it's nice to come and meet some of the guys last night. And uh, there's a lot of new faces. So coming back, it's the biggest thing is to, to be a part of the team. Sharpie, did you happen to see what the captain posted on Instagram today? I didn't. I heard about it from a friend of mine, but I, I didn't see it. So it's, it's a picture of you and Brandon with Taves and Kane in between you. And he says, I really like the flow of the two guys in the middle. <laughs> um, so the question is begged at this point. You've had the best hair on the team for, what, 10 years? <laughs> Who right now has the best flow huh. on the Chicago Blackhawks? I'm getting up there, and I notice it's starting to, to fade in the back a little bit, so. <laughs> I'd be happy to pass that title on to somebody. I think I saw a magazine or a, a newspaper cover of Ryan Hartman last year. You know, like flexing his muscles and trying to look all sexy with his eyes and everything. And was like, he, he can have that title if he wants it. I, I don't want it. Gee, I wonder where he learned that. Um, Brandon, what, tell me one of, not hockey related, but what was something you missed the last two years about the city of Chicago when you were in Columbus? <laughs> Pizza. <laughs> yeah, the deep dish. No, uh, I mean, you could go down the list, really. There's, there's great food, great people. There's lots to do. It's a great city to be around. It, uh, obviously, we're hockey players, and, and that's what you remember the most, especially winning championships. And, uh, the relationships you form with, with teammates. So it's nice to come back and uh, get back with guys that, that you had success with and obviously back to a great city with a lot of support. So that's the biggest thing is uh, the support we have in the city. I know players love to play here. Patrick, you have the luxury of moving back into the house you lived in before, so that's kind of nice, although your lovely wife, Abby, is the one that's having to do all the moving this weekend while, while you're here. How's that going? <laughs> Just a, a tough, tough coincidence that I'm tied up for the weekend, so... <laughs> so Abby's got to move the boxes and put the furniture where she wants it, so... I mean, I'd just be getting yelled at if I was doing it anyway, so let her, <laughs> let her take care of that. But it is nice to go back into the old house. Um, one of the last days that we were there, we had the Stanley Cup there, we had all the team there and uh, helicopters above the roof uh, filming us and it was a crazy scene. So it'll be uh, comfortable to get back in there and hopefully have some more great memories. Uh, Brandon, uh, when you take a look at your time in Chicago prior to coming back this time, uh, what's the, the goal that stands out most to you uh, in your Blackhawks career? Uh, I don't know, there's a lot, you know, you go back and uh, coming in as a young guy, fortunate to be around some great players and right out of the gate, we, we won the cup my first full year and 
it was a condensed season, so it all went quickly. But um, just learning how to be a pro, enjoying those memories, really, uh, it really flourished my career and uh, made me a better person and player. So the relationships, winning championships, all that goes. I know the biggest thing is living in the moment during those things. So um, everyone's goal is to win the Stanley Cup. I'm fortunate to get it a couple times here. And anytime you win it, you want to keep winning it. So I know talking to a lot of these guys, um, the hunger never leaves. So I'm excited to be back and, and hopefully win some more. Patrick. When you look back, is there certain snapshots that stand out most? I mean, it's hard to say, like, what goal was my favorite or, or what cup I remember best or most. But are there a couple little snapshots that stick out? Oh, I remember my favorite goal. Okay. Sure. Well, was, uh, what, what is your favorite? 2010 against Philly, uh, game six. I scored uh, to make it 2-2. We were down 2-1. I scored. And I did, I did something stupid. Uh, I did something stupid right after. It was when I, like... I like looked up, like, <laughs> and, and the reason I did it was because I was so nervous before that game. We were a game away from winning the Stanley Cup, something that we all worked our, our whole life to, to achieve. The city of Chicago hadn't won the Cup in a long time, and I just remember thinking, like, let me get through this game, let me play well, let's win this game. And then when I scored, I was actually, I'd scored up on Leighton at the crossbar like two or three times previous in the series, and. When I actually went to shoot the puck, it, the puck just went right along the ice between his legs. And I wasn't even trying to shoot it there. So afterwards, I was just like, <laughs> thank God. But uh, my favorite goal actually was in the same game. It was Kaner bearing that one in overtime. I was chasing him down there. It's pretty cool that it came against the team that originally drafted you. Um, Brandon, when you look back at uh, the 2013 year, I mean, that's your, it's a shortened season, your first full season in the NHL. You guys get off to that epic start, the 24 games without a regulation loss. W when you were in that room, like, what was it like? I mean, did you guys think like, any time you were down, you were gonna come back? I mean, was it, was it a kind of a surreal experience at all? Yeah, yeah, for me, Obviously, first experience, and uh, but that, the biggest thing was no, it wasn't really talked about. You know, the media harped on it or talked about this and that, but um, the room was the room. Guys were just having a blast coming to the rink. Anytime you win hockey games, uh, your confidence is high and you enjoy it. And um, it was just day to day. You know, we had a blast, uh, like a bunch of kids coming to the rink, uh, winning hockey games, and moving on to the next one. So, whether whatever city we were in or back home. We felt confident as a group, and um, it, it was a lot of fun to be a part of. You know I was undefeated that year? Who? Sharp was. <laughs> Started the season, the first 24 games, we won every single game. I got hurt in game 24. <laughs> I came back, I played two games. We won both, so we're 26-0. and 0. I sat out the next two weeks to rest the shoulder for playoffs, played the last two regular season games, 28-0. Wow! He, he wasn't counting or anything. I was just like, wow. <laughs> Let's show the highlights of those 28 games. That's pretty impressive. Uh, when you go back to that year, that, that, being down to Detroit 3-1, that was a heck of a series. Um, what, being down, forcing game seven in Detroit was incredible. But that game seven where we like to say you guys had to win it twice because Jalmerson's goal was taken off, which would have gone down as one of the, if, that, if Detroit had won that game, it would, would go down as one of the worst calls by a referee in Stanley Cup playoff history. But take us through that series, the, the, the ebbs and flows, the roller coaster ride that you guys were on and what you remember most. I'll, I'll take it back even further. Like, so in the early days of, um like 2006, seven, even before that, we would get pumped by Detroit, you know, six two every game, six nothing, six one. And I think Dunk Siebes and I were the only ones that were here for those beatings, or most of them. And then when Kane and Taves showed up, we started to kind of, you know, Detroit back then was awesome. They were winning cups or they were in the hunt every year. And we were trying to get to that level. And we lost to them in 2009. 
we finally won a cup in 2010, but we didn't play Detroit in that playoff uh, year. So then you fast forward, we're having a great season. I think we were the number one seed. We were winning all these games in that lockout year. We beat Minnesota in, in five games, I think it was. And then all of a sudden we get the wings. So it's like we got to beat the, you know, the big brother, so to speak. And they were up 3-1 in the series. So it's like, oh my God, these guys own us, you know? And looking around the room, I remember like so many young players. Sauter was there, like Nick Letty, all these young kids. And then I remember Jammer, like Jamal Mayers was there. Michael Hanzus was there. And these were guys that had played so long in their career, had been warriors wherever they were, and just never had the chance to win. And now they're on a great Chicago team, and we're going to blow it in the second round in five games. And I don't know if you remember in Detroit, like going into the third period one day, uh, Zeus, like who never says a word, right? All of a sudden spoke up and said something and everybody kind of like snapped to it. Uh, he ended up scoring to tie the game. I think that was the game Froelich scored in the penalty shot, the remember? Penalty shot, and, right. uh, and then the ball started rolling, but that game seven was crazy. The building was about as loud as it's ever been. Uh, Hammer scores a goal, which he doesn't score a lot of. And then tough call, the, the ref didn't see. Well, I guess there was something going on at the bench, but who better to, to score the winner than like Mr. Big Time Seabrook with the, with the overtime winner. And the highlight that I remember, <laughs> the, the best part of that goal was the celebration where like the camera zoomed in right across the ice on, on big Seabs with his gross beard and his huge hair. <laughs> and all these bodies like flying off him, like trying to hug him and his face was just going like, ah. <laughs> well, that's what I remember the most. Pretty good. That's good stuff. Um, when you look back at the the 2015 Stanley Cup ride, Brandon, um, what stands out most to you? What was it, was it going to Anaheim and and winning Game Seven? I mean, your guys' record under Joel in Games Four through Seven is in, it's in just incredible. It, it's this dominating. I, I can't remember it offhand. It's it's somewhere around, well, last, last year kind of changed things a little bit, but um, <laughs> I'm going to talk about that. But it's somewhere in the neighborhood of like 24 and 11 in games four through seven. Uh, but take us through the 2015 and, and especially that, that game seven in Anaheim. Yeah, that, uh, that was something special. You know, uh, they, were, they were a great team. We knew from the get-go that uh, we were facing a tough of, of opponent, but um, we always—I don't think we ever lack confidence. That's something. Playing for the Hawks, the guys are always confident in their ability, and uh, as they should be. So it's it's always fun to be a part of. They were a good team. We, we came home. I think when we we beat them in Game Six in in front of our home building, um, I think we all felt that that we could win Game Seven and. Uh, going into their building or not, we, we felt we were a confident group. So uh, you remember a lot throughout the uh, playoff series and things like that. Always face tough tests, but uh, I think the biggest thing that year for me was being able to win it at home in front of these fans. That, uh, that was something special for sure. Patrick, do you remind the guys what it was like in those early years, the 06, 07s, 08s, where... There, you would not see a Blackhawks jersey or T-shirt anywhere around town, and now you can't go anywhere without seeing one. I mean, do you remind these guys of what it was was really like? Yeah, I think sometimes we've talked about it in the locker room, and uh, it's crazy to see how far the organization has come in a short period of time, and it's all credit to the fans. I mean, I think my first game, there was less fans than we have in this room right now at the, at the whole game. <laughs> Um, I remember one of the first promotions we did off the ice, Duncan Keith and I wore our red jerseys in a train station downtown and we were handing out free tickets to games and like people couldn't even, people couldn't get away from us fast. Like, <laughs> it was like we were like bothering them. They were like, get out of the way, I'm trying to catch my train. And uh, I just imagine now if you saw Dunks in his jersey handing out free tickets in the train station, it would be crazy down there. So. Um, it's, it's special, man. It's, that's why Sauter and I are so happy to come back. It's, uh, it's a special place to play. The fans make it special. The way the organization treats you on and off the ice, it's like, there's nothing better. So we're, we're happy to be back. 